Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today I'm going to talk to you about SEO and PPC and optimizing your listings, but I brought an expert guest with me. Why? Because these are not my levels of expertise, right? SEO, PPC. I'm always learning just like you guys. And so I bring on amazing guests and, and opportunities to chat with people who are just smarter than me and know much more about SEO and PPC and listing optimizations to the point where we can just make more sales. That's what we're here for, right? We're in e-commerce. We want to make more sales. We want to use the best tools out there and the best the best strategies and tips and i brought on an expert Chris christian i know i can't even say my own name <laughs> Kristen. Kristen. i know i was about to say Kristen. christian kelm and he is going to be talking about um, some specific tools specific ways that we can dive into seo what is seo well it's optimizing your listing search engine optimization and why this is important beyond just our amazon listing did you know that 99 percent of people no i don't know what that statistic is i'm just kidding around about the 99 percent the percentage of people who find Amazon listings by going to Google first. I mean, are you guys guilty of that? How many times have you gone to just Google something and then an Amazon listing is the first thing that comes up? Y'all, this is what we all need to do. Everyone goes to Google for everything, really? So when they're going to Google or search engines, they're gonna be typing in keywords to find your products on Amazon even if they don't go to Amazon. So yes, we need to be optimized for Amazon, but we also need to be optimized for every other search engine out there. So we're bringing in the troops. We're bringing in the experts. And Christian has a such a background in Amazon. Um, their motto is helping people help themselves. Like our data, your decision. I love this approach because it's really up to us what kind of keywords, what kind of listings we wanna write and how we can optimize them for maximum sales across all platforms, right? So we wanna make sure that we're getting in this. Um, he's been uh, in 10 years in marketing, um, product marketing manager, any, everything from Amazon vending to Amazon agencies to private label consulting and it's just gonna be a wealth of information. So I want you guys to lean in there. But first, before we get into our interview, I want to remind you of the Invisible Warriors concert that's coming up on June 3rd. So June 3rd, Invisible Warriors, in case you missed the last episode, Invisible Warriors, I'm sitting on the board of directors at Invisible Warriors. It's an organization that supports um, women who suffer from chronic and oftentimes invisible uh, illnesses, diseases, and disabilities. So we give them the support, the finances, the funding, the programs that they need to continue earning an income while still suffering from major chronic illnesses and things of that sort. So there's an opportunity to support this in a in the benefit concert on June 3rd in Huntsville, Alabama. It's at Fractal Brewery. You can get tickets at mommyincome.com forward slash concert. I will be there. I will be helping with emceeing. I will be running um, and helping run a cornhole tournament there that also benefits the organization. So it's gonna be a fun, great time. I'd love to meet all of you if you guys are in the area. Um, have a conversation, hang out. Uh, it's at a brewery. There'll be food trucks. There'll be vendors. It's going to be a really fun event. And guess what, y'all? It's less than the cost of dinner. If you get an early bird ticket, it's $35. If you get your general admission ticket, it's $40. We even have a live stream only uh, $15 ticket. If you're out of town and unable to make it, you can still support the organization and see the concert in live stream form. Um, and so there's going to be a great musicians there. Um, all kinds of different genres, everything from punk rock to country to um, folk indie. Uh, my son's actually going to be playing there as one of the musicians in the concert. So please come to the concert if you can. If not, please spend the 40 bucks and just support the organization. We really, really need the funds to help um, people who are suffering in ways that are unable to make income in a traditional way and get um, support and help that they need. So if you know an invisible warrior, somebody who um, has a disease, a chronic illness that, that oftentimes is unseen. So you can see people when they're in wheelchairs or they have a specific ailment that is visible, but many, many, many people are suffering in silence. That's why the concert's called Silent No More. And you can support us and the organization at uh, mommyincome.com forward slash concert 
concert. There's ways to donate, buy a ticket, even if you can't uh, attend. We would love your support there. Uh, and thank you so much for that. So mommyincome.com forward slash concert. Uh, you can get that there. And now without further ado, let's welcome our guest Christian to the show. Christian, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you here. Hello, thank you for having me here and giving us the opportunity. I know I'd love to have conversations with really interesting people talking about Amazon. And it seems like we both have really high energy. So this is going to be all kinds of fun. <laughs> yeah, you need to watch the video. Of course, yeah. I'm always moving and trying to, to sign something with my hands. And it's not only about the podcast. You need to hear the podcast, of course. But the video, I think, is always cooler. Absolutely. Well, and you can really connect on more of a human level when you're really seeing someone face to face. So that's why I always love um, video as well. So you have an extensive Amazon resume here with all of the different things that you have. Tell me a little bit about how you got into Amazon, um, whether I, I know you started in a, in a different way than I did. So I'd love to hear your story about how you came acquainted with Amazon. Yeah, uh, I was in the German Armed Forces 10 years and when leaving it because of uh, shoulder issues and um, when uh, my first kid was born and I was searching for, uh, for a job and my, my ex-wife found a cool um, company directly in the next, um, in the next village. <laughs> And uh, so I started there. Uh, first uh, was the solution between uh, sourcing, sales, or marketing. Uh, I joined there as a marketing manager, product marketing manager. And uh, I directly stepped in the ring with the big business as an Amazon vendor. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, everybody has a lot of experience in uh, products to the shelf, to the stationary shelves of the big markets. And um, so I asked one question, what's about Amazon? <laughs> Um, of course, I, I was not from the company. Uh, I was absolutely unbranded, um, no experience in e-commerce, no experience in marketing at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I directly joined uh, a European, complete European brand and managed the vendor for them. And that was the first two years. And after that, to keep it short and simple, agency um, for a big seller, Seller X, uh, formerly known as KW or KW Mobile. Uh, then I worked uh, as a consultant. And last but not least, uh, I joined MLIs. And now since four years, I'm working as a software as a service. So the only thing missing is uh, FBA seller. You, <laughs> might, you might think that. And on the other side, working for Amazon. But I had my own private label business for salad cutter balls. Yes, mm -hmm. nobody knows what that is. It's absolutely niche, but mm -hmm. it worked well. And so I've got my experience over the last 10 years with all the different steps. Uh, that's, that's crazy. And I had uh, customers uh, in, all, in all the categories, really in, mm -hmm. in every category. And so I have a good network, a lot of experience, and I'm learning from all of you out there, I'm mm -hmm. not making all the experience by myself. Of course, we are working with customers and we are connected and networking. And so we are building up all that uh, information and knowledge for you. Of course, we are sharing it with you. Certainly not. I love what you said about your motto being helping, helping people help themselves and our data, your decision. So I know you guys yeah. will talk about your data tool in, in a little bit, but I know a lot of your expertise lies in the, the SEO side of writing listings. And I'd love to dive a little bit deeper into, first of all, letting people know, again, I know it's basic, but we can go over what exactly is SEO and why it matters to your Amazon listing. Yeah, uh, from my point of view, the main problem is uh, that you need to understand what the search engine optimization for Amazon means. If you don't have the wording in your content, uh, like title, uh, bullet points, or backend keywords, you have a problem. When you're not naming it as your customer is talking, the customer language is the relevant setup to get indexed and at the end to be shown in the SERP in the search engine result page on Amazon. And on, on Google and other marketplaces, it's not working exactly like that. And without the exact names, key phrases in your listing, you will not be shown. Even if you are a football, but when you're naming it 
the egg ball, yeah, <laughs> you have a problem. And um, with that problem comes all the trouble behind it, PPC, uh, customer cannot find you, customer cannot buy you. And so the fundamental basics behind the product, good product, best price, uh, hopefully FBA. Uh, the next big thing is Amazon SEO. And that's the fundament of all your Amazon business at the end. And when you are gambling with that or, or building uh, shitty content, mm -hmm. you have big, big, big problem in the long and in the mid one. Mm. Yeah, I know you mentioned something earlier about if you have like a crappy product, you're going to have, you know, you're, you're going to have crappy results, no matter how much SEO and how much keywords and the best yep. possible listing. Uh, no one wants to if no one wants to buy it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, or if nobody knows the, the name for the product, if it is a specific niche in, in the kitchen gadgets, where are endless kitchen gadgets with namings you will never understand <laughs> uh, what the specific egg cutters are available on the market. Um, without nobody knowing the words for it, you can optimize as hard as you want. You have the best pictures, the best content, but nobody is searching for it because nobody knows the word for that specific product. And that's the big problem. That is a big problem. How do you recommend coming, uh, going about that? I know I teach my students in some different ways to use some different uh, tools and to do a little bit of research on what something would be called and what would a customer call it. Because honest to goodness, no matter your product, like you said, could be the best in the world and it could solve a huge problem. But if somebody doesn't know how to title it properly or what is the name of this item, this is such a big problem, especially for wholesale bundlers, you know, um, where we're putting different kits together and calling something as a whole. You could have four individual products in the same yeah. box, but what yeah. is the whole entire product called? What would you call it? Like I, I use it often an example, the, the Mother's Day spa gift set. So it's got lotion and body wash and a loofah and you know some, some things inside of it. But those things individually named are not a spa gift set. So calling it, titling it, naming it properly, and then even crossing language barriers or even regionally people to people explain and talk about products in a different way. So like I always use like purse versus handbag, you know, everyone calls something, something different. And if your customers, if you don't know the names of things your customers are, are looking for, they're never going to find you. Or if you are only talking about, let's say, bundling of, of lotions and so on for, uh, for, for, for mummies. Um, so for, for self care, yeah, every, everybody knows that I have two kids, a stress, a stressful yeah. life, and you're building up an anti-stress self-care mm -hmm. set, and you're putting in a cool lotion uh, with, with everything together, but you're missing the wellness, the beauty part, mm -hmm. the health part, and all that, or the specific seasonal situations like Mother's Day um, or Valentine's Day. And that is one of the biggest problems with the synonyms. Um, we have built a solution for that. That's, that's quite cool. Um, of course, uh, we are working with a specific system um, to find relevant words. Uh, that means at the end, um, it's simply called related terms. So you're just giving into the system uh, a term like, uh, a trash can and you will see highly relevant garbage can litter box or that different things or when you're entering for example with a synonym um health healthcare you will find self-care you will find beauty you will find uh, wellness of course we are just looking for um the serps the products mm -hmm. under that keyword and we are looking where the other products are also shown under that uh, specific keywords and you will find the dialects you will find different languages um and you will you will understand how a customer is uh, using their own terms and of course on the other side uh the easiest way is working with re re oh, sorry the reverse lookups yes <laughs> Just putting in uh, uh, the different ASINs and you're looking where we are shown mm -hmm. from the SEO part. That's the one opportunity. Um, but more and more tools as our tool also offer that solution uh, showing the revenue share. So where at the end the purchases are ha uh, happening. Of course, it's more interesting to know where the money is uh, uh, going on instead of where the search is going on. Mm -hmm. Only SEO doesn't mean uh, to look for high search volume keywords. Uh, you have to look for the perfect fit where, where the customer is not searching. You have to look where the customers at the end add to cart and purchase. Yes. So 
that is that is one of the biggest problem but uh, I, I really like your your uh, example with the sets of course the sets are high level uh, um, problems um from from my idea um if you're if you're talking about managing portfolios i really start to to work with 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 sets yeah um, the idea for example is everybody's selling a garden chair um but what's about the cushions and the covers Exactly. What's with a stool? Uh, what's with a cup holder and the umbrella for mm -hmm. for that chair? And you can offer a garden start set for for the next season, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or uh, what what I'm uh, trying to develop in in Germany with a big uh, uh, with a big uh, client for uh, garbage cans is uh, build a set of of garbage cans not in different colors and sizes. Try to build it up for the rooms. Mm. You have kids room uh the, the bureau you have uh the, the kitchen you have the bath you have for example the garden or or uh, the carport and you need different um garbage cans trash cans litter boxes mm -hmm. yes. paper cans in every room and that is an average order value that is awesome a lot of movement in in the united states in the U in europe in the big cities the students are leaving into their first big flat into their mm -hmm. first house and you need to understand that there are really, really cool possibilities of building up solutions. So mm -hmm. don't, 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 don't call it bundle. Mm -hmm. uh, from from my point of view, I I really like everybody in the United States can use virtual bundles. In Europe, we are way behind uh, the market. Uh, but uh, calling it solutions, mm -hmm. offer specific solutions uh, that is really really awesome and, well, and uh, i love what you say there when it, when it comes to the solutions because i'm always preaching that to my audience is not about the product it's about the problem you solve it's about you need to always. So solve Always. a problem and then solve some people problem. were like well this isn't a, you know i've had the conversation with people this isn't a problem and i'm like actually every single thing is a challenge a problem an issue so like the word problem stops people but then i say okay well i have a boss and i want to buy them a gift for boss's day or someone is retiring that's still a problem in the sense that you need an answer a solution yeah. a product to meet that need so i always say meet a need or or solve a problem and you will have you will find sales you know and it doesn't matter how small because with amazon being so global it doesn't matter if say the the niche is is a micro niche i love micro niches i do okay. because there are people that are very very dedicated to certain things and whether it's a food product or a hobby or a craft or a, something that they're doing with their leisure time um people are very dedicated to their their sporting events or their hobbies or crafts and so you might not have five million people looking for something but you have a very very dedicated micro niche of say maybe 20,000 people that are looking for they something. will love you yes they will build a relationship with you they will uh, pay more for it's their hobby they, they are into the problem they are loving the solutions mm -hmm. they're not only purchasing a product mm -hmm. they are they are known uh, they, they know that they purchase a solution somebody has mm -hmm. thought about the problem and build it up a solution and that is the really trustful customer uh, you can always look on and you will be have better emotional uh, connections with them. Mm -hmm. They will spread it, spread to mouth. They will talk about that uh, instead of the normal purchase. Yes, I've purchased a new garbage can in black, 60 <laughs> liter or 50 gallon, but uh, whatever. But nobody is into it. Nobody will start to love it. Of course, mm -hmm. you're not into the solution. Um, that is uh, one of the one of the best examples uh, to understand what you need to look for. If you're working in, in wholesale, if you're working with FBA, or if you're creating a big new uh, products for for big brands, uh, make sure that you are building up a product as a solution. Of course, with the the people out there are not starting to search on Amazon. That is a big mistake. Um, the statistic is really, really clear here. They are stating the customer is starting their product search on Amazon, mm -hmm. but not the problem search. The problem mm -hmm. search is still out there. TikTok, Google, influencers, and all there out there. Uh, we are trying to connect to somebody who has a solution or is solving that problem. And then after that, 
Mm -hmm. We are starting to search for product. And in that process, you can build up a customer search um, with your solution and your naming let's say, mm -hmm. the anti-stressful self-healthcare mummy set. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now we know, oh, that is the solution. And now I'm going to search for that product. And now we are um, in, the, in, the, in, the better, in the better funnel situation for you because you are offering the namings. And so the SEO, you are only optimized for that specific terms they are using. And then, bam, you're not in the competition with the normal products on Amazon. That's absolutely helpful mm -hmm. to understand that outside of Amazon, where is the endless traffic and where is the starting point to search for solutions for real problems? And after understanding, oh, where is the solution out there? Now we are starting to search for product. Product per se starts on Amazon. Problem per se starts not on Amazon. See, I love that. I love that perspective and just you illuminating that, that that is absolutely true. When customers are looking for solutions, they first do, like you said, an info search. They're like, well, yeah. what is it? I have this problem. What it, you know, I, I mean, we can say, you know, a foot problem, even you're saying you hurt your, you injured your foot, not quite needing a doctor, but maybe there's a special shoe, special insole, something like that. And your research, your customers, your customers research starts off of Amazon. And then Amazon listings, if you are SEO, if you are uh, optimized for all of the, the problems that you solve. So you guys, when you're writing your listings, when you're when you're thinking about that, remember that the customer is looking to solve something. They have a need, they have a want, they have a desire, they have a problem. And they're like, I need a product. I need something that's going to be the solution. Oftentimes it's that product. So this is why I'm always encouraging people go to Pinterest, go to oh, blogs, yes. go to specialty websites first and learn about what your customers problems yeah. are so that you can fix them. Another really great way to do this for for the seller to come up with different products and solutions is to read reviews. Now, I, I would say if you have a specific product or you're considering a specific product you want to bring to the table, go and read all of your competitors customers customer reviews because yes. your customers will they will tell you oh i like this but i wish it was bigger i wish it was thicker i wish it was stronger i wish it was made out of metal instead of wood and guess what those are all product opportunities that you can take advantage of because someone's saying oh i got this and it's great but i wish it was this and now you have a whole new solution to offer that's a reverse product development <laughs> uh, i have a few yeah. students that have written their master exam about it uh, when you're coming from the data, from the information, Q&As, reviews about your products, and you combine it with the Amazon SEO part, you will build up new products. Uh, the normal way is you're following a cooking receipt, uh, just entering search volume here, only a few competitors, a lot of reviews or less reviews, and you're just uh, copying the market. But without copying the market, you will only be as good as the market. Mm. You want to be better as the market. And so you have to create your own solutions. At the, the highest level would be Steve Jobs or Elon Musk. <laughs> they are creating new problems. Okay. <laughs> they are creating new problems and build up solutions for that. Okay. That's a different uh, uh, kind of, of brand. Yeah. When we're talking about Anchor, nobody needed an, an, a power bank. Mm -hmm. Anchor started with it, got the hype with Pokemon Go. Nobody knows that. Pokemon Go was a really, really catalyzer for power banks, and especially for Anchor. Of course, uh, Pokemon Go has a lot of usage of, of uh, all the internet, and so your Aku always uh, your, was down, and you needed more energy, your more mm -hmm. power for your, for your uh, mobile phone. And that is the first step you need to understand. Uh, what I've often heard, uh, hearing is, uh, I don't have data from my customers. You don't need to. Mm -hmm. Every review, Q&A from your competitors, read them, understand them, and build up a solution from that ideas. Of course, endless numbers of reviews in all the uh, countries, United mm -hmm. States, Europe, um, uh, Japan, and all the others. So you can build up a uh, customer solutions per marketplace. And that is awesome. Don't try to copy and paste your, your products over all mm -hmm. countries and all uh, uh, Amazon marketplaces. That will not work in the, in the direct scenario. Uh, be detailed and get nerdy. Get nerdy and dirty. You need to <laughs> dig deep into the data. And then you will have fun and you will enjoy. So what, 
what is the one when you say get nerdy and dirty? I love it. I was like, so what, I love data as well because I feel like it just gives you so much information that you don't have to guess. We're not bringing products to the table because we feel like it because they're cute or whatever. We bring products to the table because we have solutions and needs to meet for our customers. Um, and customers have all kinds of problems and needs. And so that's what that's what we're bringing. So I but, love that. But what is everybody is doing? Uh, everybody is uh, just sourcing a new color. <laughs> I know. I find that so silly. It's like, why can't you come yeah. up with another solution for this? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, everybody's coming up with a new color or a design changing as the next big thing for 2023, but you're solving the same problem. Mm -hmm. uh, some at the end, in especially in niches, uh, the market is saturated, I think is mm -hmm. the word. Um, so you don't will uh, find new customers. Mm -hmm. You need a portfolio of solutions, uh, especially let's let's talk about bathrooms, uh, uh, children room, kitchen, and so with all the garbage cans. That's uh, absolutely simple, simple solutions to to think bigger, uh, bigger to start about thinking in the household. What's the next product he need to use? Or with uh, with a garden chair, when we are talking about the cup holder and the cushions and the covers and the stool for your legs mm. and. Uh, normally, what uh, the typical FBA seller is trying is, okay, we are sourcing a garden chair and the next product is uh, yeah, a rope for sport. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. the next thing is an uh, automobile accessory uh, for, the, for the plates or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so it doesn't fit into your brand. And so you're building up a puzzle of, of brand non-brand connected products, but with building up solutions, a portfolio, mm -hmm. That well, is building up a brand. Well, I, I think that's so, so important to mention there too, because there's so, I, I often tell my clients over and over again when I'm speaking to them, the don't reinvent the wheel, don't start over from scratch. If you found a really good product in a niche that's already selling, stay with the same data, stay with the same keywords, and what is another solution in the same yeah. niche that you can that you can solve? Because What's if the next some pr product they are searching for, what's the next purchase? Exactly. Purchase, and that's why you need to get nerdy. You mm -hmm. need to understand uh, your your customer why he is having that problem. You're solving that problem, but what? Uh, sorry, but what is the next surrounding in their habit, in their behavior? What's the next product um, uh, to them? So, a typical example is uh, gaming, 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 gaming. Everybody knows the gaming accessories, mm -hmm. consumer electronics. And normally every gamer needs a keyboard, a mouse pad, a mouse, um, and all that stuff. But then after it, um, as the supplement uh, exploded, worldwide mm -hmm. supplements exploded, nobody was talking about the gamers. Gamers mm -hmm. need different supplements. Mm -hmm. The next big thing was, were the supplements for the sportsmen, for the different sports. Uh, um, a soccer player gets other supplements than basketball players, of course, through mm -hmm. the different movement scenarios. And that's the thing at the first, at the beginning, nobody was thinking about that. How you can get a gamer focused all the time without energy drinks <laughs> yeah. in supplements. Yeah. yeah. And nobody was looking so detailed into all that uh, specific categories and nobody was talking to the customers. Mm -hmm. Everybody is coming from their portfolio. You need a new keyboard. We have a better keyboard. Mm -hmm. Now we have metal keyboard. Now we have an illuminated metal keyboard. Now it's a wireless <laughs> metal illuminated <laughs> keyboard, uh, keyboard. Pretty soon there'll be like 500 keywords based on yeah, the same and, thing. And you're sitting, you're sitting at home oh, today. I want to try a wet keyboard. Oh no, wet keyboard. No, you have one keyboard. <laughs> One, one, at yeah. least. And, and to be one. fair, to be fair, how often do you really, does your keyword, key, keyword, your keyboard <laughs> break that you need to replace it? I mean, I've had the same one for a really, really long time. So like, it's, that, that's here. not very smart, right? So I love the idea and I'm, I'm an idea person. I know not everybody is as creative, is creative and doesn't tap into that side of their brain often enough, but sometimes doing just a brainstorming session with three or four different people to say, okay, yeah. Different people, different people, different people, different, different people. demographic, if uh, it, diff different age groups, different uh, cultures, different religions. Not your friends. Yeah, not your friends. Not your friends. 
just a group of people that from different walks of life, different diversity there, so that you can get different perspectives on, well, what do you foresee as the problem here? What do you foresee as the problem there? Customer research is so important when you sell products. I mean, I think so many people, um, they, they get into, you know, there's tools, there's software, you can type in your product and you can get all kinds of data and that's all great. But customer service and customer um, meeting those needs and solving those problems create the superior product products because you actually spoke to the people who need them. And so whether it's reading the reviews or the Q and A's or actually sitting face to face with what you can, what you assume is your uh, demographic that will really help you to develop the best possible products or bring the best possible products to the table that might not even be there yet. Or it's a modification of something, or it's a grouping like we do wholesale bundles, a grouping of products that can solve a specific need or a problem. Yeah, that is one of the biggest problem. If you're talking about uh, figuring out that garden shares is, for example, now a seasonal product that comes up and you're looking into the data, you're seeing, oh yeah, garden shares are <laughs> working very well. I will start to sourcing one of them. You know, you're um, looking for the best sellers and seeing, okay, I have the same product copy, mm -hmm. um, but uh, you're just copying data and colors, function and features, but you don't know what to talk about and the normal data descriptions, um, you cannot directly copy it. But at the end, you will not understand that the best seller has the best legs for garden chairs. Mm -hmm. They are absolutely stable. They are not scratching about uh, the outside of your uh, porch. It's mm -hmm. the correct word, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, the quality at the end the customer is enjoying. It's not about the color of that garden chair. Mm -hmm. In the long run, everybody has recognized best legs, absolutely stable, not scratching mm -hmm. anywhere. And you have sourced the same thing, but you have screws under your legs and everything gets scratched and uh, is defective. And you're like, why we are selling so much and I'm not, I've copied the same product mm -hmm. and all of that but you were not into detail. You haven't understand the original problem and the solution that specific uh, chair is offering. And mm -hmm. on the other side, one of the other big problems is when you're just only looking into the data of, of tools or not the tools, let's talk about uh, Amazon data. Absolutely wonderful what Amazon has released the last uh, half year, um, but you're only seeing the results at the end. You're seeing a bestseller, 10,000 sales per week. Absolutely wonderful. When you're trying to get connections to the search volume and you're asking, well, we have only 5,000 search volume per week for that main keyword, but they are making 10,000 of sales. Uh, Houston, we have got a problem, a big mm -hmm. problem. Oh, damn it. Maybe we are using external traffic. We are maybe working with an influencer. So mm -hmm. if you're only focusing on the data, you only will see the results, but you don't know the way how mm -hmm. we are driving traffic to their listing. Is it just Amazon organic uh, traffic and um, uh, results? Or is there an influencer for it, a big, big TikTok account, YouTube videos, or what else mm -hmm. um, out there? And so that is one of the biggest problems from, from my point of view while judging data. Judging yeah. problems is really easy. Is it a problem? Is there a solution? Yes or no. That's much more easier instead of uh, judging uh, end results on uh, how they have um, become results uh, with external traffic or with only uh, on page or a lot of PPC maybe where mm -hmm. spending uh, budgets you will never have to spend. And you need to uh, understand that there's more behind that uh, normal uh, point of view. And so from my point of view, like you said, I would always go back as, as far as possible and start with what is the problem my product is solving. Mm -hmm. And after that, you can go step by step by step. Absolutely. I am so in agreement with that. And so many people aren't really talking about that that type of product selection because we want you know we're lazy we want ai to do everything for us now we want to type in one keyword and we want it all to write our listings for us and be all happy the reality is that 
we use the tools, but the tools don't work on their own. They don't work without us analyzing what it means. What are we're, what are we supposed to do it from a human perspective? So yeah, we can get all the data in the whole world, but it's about what you do with it and what you're going to utilize it for. That's really the key. Yeah, and uh, the other problem is uh, what I've uh, what I've seen when I visited the United States. Uh, when something is just standard for everybody, nobody will come to that point that that is a cool niche to invest. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never seen such uh, uh, interesting things like trash compactor or uh, specific uh, trash cleaners and uh, or door um, specific um, parts in the in the in the um, in the trash cans to make it smell better i was like what that what is that no that's normal product i'm like well, that's normal that's an absolutely niche why you're using a trash compactor yeah you're coming from different scenarios you have your specific expertise you're coming from a different household scenario and so you're always misjudging different scenarios and so that's so important to get feedback from other people but at the end, hopefully, don't like you, of course, they will always tell you the truth. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody you like and so on, they always say, yeah, that's a cool idea. I would not buy it. It's a cool idea. <laughs> I would not buy it. Oh, yeah, awesome, awesome. Do it, do it. Right. Um, sometimes the feedback is missing at the end. And yeah, with it, it's the it's same. It's super important to, I think, get feedback from people that aren't your best friends. You know, someone that having like a, a, a mastermind or having some place where people are going to be able to be tough on you and say, well, here, that that's a decent idea. However, here's some of the different flaws and not taking it personally. As we, as we're developing ideas, you're going to have, you know, five out of the 10 ideas that are probably garbage and you're going to throw them away. Oh, that was yeah. a good thought, but there's holes in, in, in the, the law logic of why it would work or why it wouldn't work and who needs what where, um, as opposed to really um, getting honest feedback about products yeah, and product absolutely. ideas. And the internet is full of the answers that we need, um, whether there's a solution or not a solution for a specific product or a specific niche yet is to be determined based on your research, based on going to not just Amazon, but different blogs and different sites that, you know, where people are Reddit and people that are hanging out talking about their problems. I mean, everyone loves to complain about all the things that are wrong with the world and products and things like that. So go and read them, read their complaints and, and then provide the solutions that they were complaining about. And the next step behind it is as Amazon SEO is just find data and words for your specific uh, niche or products. The problem is if you are staying in garden chairs with the next garden chair and the next feature and the next function of a garden chair, we will always stay in the same competition for the words. Mm -hmm. When we are trying to work in solutions like the cushions, the covers, uh, cup holder, umbrella, and all that stuff or a stool, you will start to spread into other SERPs into other keywords you are not only focusing on one word you are becoming part of more and more wider ranges of search and at the end that is absolutely necessary to understand uh, as an example with a key uh, with a keyboard you have one keyword since two three or four years when you will uh, purchase a new one or search for a new one now uh, with that um, problem and solving portfolio for the next product, combined product, necessary products, uh, trash can, trash compactor, trash cleaner, trash bags, mm -hmm. stay in touch with a customer over a longer time as you're offering different solutions for the different times and the different usages. Mm -hmm. so you're really becoming a problem solving brand. And now you can focusing on the SEO for that product, SEO for that product. And the normal product uh, problem is a variation with the next color is just the same product, same keywords, just the color has changed and you will not gain any opportunities and any new success and experience in the next search for the next customer. And you are only working with one customer once. Of course, mm -hmm. yes, purchase the keyword. Nice. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Um, but what should he purchase next from your brand? And um, in the in the in the short run, that's absolutely normal to start with a product, learn the behavior of Amazon, understand uh, the processes, and so on. But at the end, you need to understand the behavior of a customer and how to get a customer 
purchase again and again and again and again from your brand. Not always the same product, but of course, that maybe means your keyboard is really, really a problematic key <laughs> keyboard. And I really like that idea of, of creating uh, bigger solutions and portfolios. Of course, the Amazon SEO getting uh, easier. Of course, you're um, working with more and more. It's with roulette. You can set your, your bits on different numbers. That is really mm -hmm. cool. And when we're talking about bits, yeah. You can also set your bits on different keywords as you split your portfolio, not in colors and not in sizes. You are splitting your portfolio in different products and different solutions. Solutions, yeah. That is so awesome um, to have that mindset. Well, I appreciate all of your insight into talking about all of these solutions. Now, tell me about your, you work with uh, your company. Tell me about the company you work for, the tools and solutions that you're providing for sellers so that we can find more solutions for our customers. Yeah, um, the easiest way um, uh, is, of course, a normal keyword uh, data uh, database. But the problem here is really simple. You will only see, as every tool is uh, working with it, millions and millions of keywords with uh, buying power behind it, search volume, and all that stuff. But um, let's, let's, let's say it's a Rubik Cube, and you are looking at the one pattern of the one side. And now take the same data and just look at the other side of it. And for example, we have significant terms. And so we split all that phrases into their parts and count them. Mm -hmm. So now you can see not all the keywords for trash can or so. Now you can see um, in the numbers of, um, of, uh, of accountings that trash can, of course, is the biggest thing, but with lid, with outlet, the bags, the compactor, you can directly see what is the next relevant products in just mm. countings in the in the in the key phrases. And after that, that is one of the most interesting parts uh, we have developed. For example, a thing that is called entities. Mm. Entities is just meant uh, what colors, brands, attributes the customer is, is searching for in relation to your main keyword. But we are splitting all the different words into the specific entities. And so you can directly see if it is a synonym, a standalone product, or is it a specific size, a specific naming for the same size, yeah, gallons, mm -hmm. liters for the volume, or if uh, there are special events and triggers for that event, uh, for that product search. The event is the, is the product search. And you can also find uh, feature spe uh, specialities or the different locations. Uh, that's why I've come up with that example with a, with a garbage can. Of course, when you're then uh, going only through the locations, you're reading, oh, bathroom, bath, toilet. Uh, yeah, maybe they are a bit smaller versus kitchen, versus uh, child room, uh, versus uh, a garage or carport. And when you're like, damn it why i haven't thought about that it's so it's so eye-opening um mm -hmm. of course you're just in your in your tunnel in your focus for your your product and the entities are splitting up um the searches and the key phrases into that specific sections also audiences and genders mm -hmm. um a lot of people are mixing up the problems with uh, with the genders um but maybe you're just missing specific gender uh, in, a, in a product portfolio. And then you can understand and try to figure out, well, that is a problem maybe only a kid will have when it has to use the pedal of um, uh, to open up the lid of a garbage can. Of course, for a normal parents, they have more muscle power and it's mm. really easy to open. Um, but what's about kids? You need a different scenario. And then you have other bullet point images like, Perfect for kids, easy to open, means mm. really easy to open. We are not talking about a uh, uh, 170 pound guy that's using its feet, bam, bam. Mm. No, uh, kids have other problems. And so you just don't copy your product with a different color in, in, in uh, little bubbles and light blue, light green for your garbage can. No, change the product and make it simple for the kids, simple to use, specific needs, specific solutions. And so you're building up step by step uh, that ideas behind it. And so entities, for example, is an absolute unique way um, to work with it. Uh, on the other side, 
uh, just only last, uh, I don't want to go through all that features. It's not a sales uh, podcast mm -hmm. here. Um, with a reverse lookup, that is only one way um, to understand where the searches uh, are coming through for that product. Um, we have also a sales share for that um, in, our, in our data. So you can enter a lot of uh, products and you can directly see also variation based which one of them is really the purchased one. Of course, the typical problem is you're copying your market. You will only get as good as, you, as the market. And they have 10, 50 or more different colors. And you're like, okay, that's the market. I need to stay with the market. But when you're in the data seeing and, oh, it's only interested, so dark gray and black and brown. That's mm -hmm. the only colors they are selling. The rest is just portfolio blown up mm. of course there are different colors we have sourced different colors but nobody's purchasing them and so you will find a better focus um, when it comes to a look into details of the competitors to figuring out which sizes are relevant sizes mm. you don't need to start with all of them yeah which colors functions and all that stuff are really really relevant of course when you're going into the fashion for example don't look at all the socks and all the patterns, colors, and all, all that. Try to figure out what is really selling. Mm. And uh, that is one of the biggest problems when it comes to judging the data. Uh, normally, we are too fast in the find a product scenario. And if you are deciding too fast just for the product, you're starting to source it. Amazon SEO in the start, also Amazon PPC will not solve the problem, but mm -hmm. you are not solving a problem. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It always starts with the uh, with, uh, with first decisions and invest more and more time into the decision which product you want or which problem you want to solve yeah, instead of uh, which product you want to source. And after that, Amazon SEO and also PPC are self-running system course you're into your customers you have done your research you have understand why we are searching for what we are using it and so you know exactly what you're going to write about you know exactly what uh, images you need uh, to show and in the part of writing about don't get it wrong but description on amazon bullet point on amazon mobile first images are first Make a good title, readable title, understandable title, but the rest of the content is um, more SEO relevant instead mm. of customer relevant. Go on yes. your phone, mobile phone, and try to read bullet points on the in the in the Amazon app. It's mm. nearly not possible to find them. Yeah, absolutely. The title and images are so important first because, and using, like I said, those alternate words, those alternate things. So in conclusion, we both are just in perfect agreement that we do not provide products. We provide solutions yeah. to problems yeah, <laughs> and absolutely. everyone needs to start there with their research and their SEO. And I love like how you were wrapped up there by just saying the title and the images are the most important things. And then the others are really your, your, um, SEO. SEO rich content that you're going to be putting in there. I mean, what I like to tell Don't people- spam it. Don't yeah. spam it. No, Don't get it absolutely. extra long or so. That's not what, what we have talked about. No. When we, we have only said, you spam. Clear, yeah. yeah, concise, clear. Um, efficient. We don't want, you know, if you're selling, you know, a coffee mug, a coffee mug that you're drinking out of, you don't want to put coffee beans or ground coffee just because they're good keywords. That will actually push you towards the bottom of search because people that are looking for coffee beans aren't going to be looking for the coffee mug. So you have to be super concise, super specific. Yeah. I mean, we can't say that enough. I've seen so many listings that are like, how, how do you expect to be found here when you're, you're using all these spam keywords that, that aren't going to, they're not helping. The more is not always merrier. Sometimes I always say simple, less is more when you're being specific. Yeah, yeah keep it simple, stupid. Uh, yeah. Kiss. <laughs> yes. Ab absolutely. Uh, for, for that, uh, one point is absolutely relevant. Um, as you said it, when you're using more and more synonyms, um, you're losing relevance mm -hmm. more and more and more. Of course, in the, in the normal uh, purchase and search behavior, if you have less, only coffee mug, maybe only the title is, is wet all your traffic will only be focused on that words. Mm -hmm. If you have more and more and more words, your listing get judged by all of that. You're building up uh, a 
too big funnel to be judged well. And so you're losing a lot of momentum. And on the other side for, for the title, one, one little uh, uh, hind from, from mine, it's not about the length. It's about the technique behind it. Of course, you have that different views on the title. It's cut it on different mm -hmm. uh, scenarios, four lines, three lines, two lines. And uh, on the normal situation, you can only read the full title on the PDP. Mm -hmm. And so it's necessary to understand that relevant technique, the relevant information, the main uh, problem solving, not unique selling points, the main problem solving points need to be in the first scenarios of the title, not for SEO. It's about click behavior of a customer and that the customer understands, yes, it has or door closed or whatever it has a specific uh, soft closing lid or it has a sense or um, don't try to put with first search volume highest search volume keywords at the beginning of a title think like you would shop and your shopping behavior you need the information when it's not in the main image you need the information at the beginning of the title to make sure yes that's the problem i need click on it now you can purchase it. Um, that's absolutely necessary for, for title optimization from my point of view. Well, thank you so much for all of this time and all of your energy. There's so many great tips here. Where can everybody go to connect with you and find out more about your company? Yeah, we have a YouTube channel, uh, also an English YouTube channel, a German one, and uh, LinkedIn is the easiest way um, to uh, get in touch with uh, with me. You can uh, directly write if you have any any questions, or uh, you can follow me. I'm posting all the time, as everybody is doing mm -hmm. uh, on, on LinkedIn. Um, but the most relevant uh, situation, uh, you said that at the beginning, our data, your decision. Mm -hmm. And we are only teaching you to get rid of your problem. So don't ask if I can do anything for, for you. Come with a problem and you will get an answer or a consultancy or whatever. Or uh, don't ask me, what can I do with a tool? No, no, no. So it's not working in that way. We need to understand what is your problem and when we can figure out if we have a solution or not. It's it's not in that scenario like, okay, I want to use the tool, show me. No, I need to understand your problem as I need to understand the customer's problem first and then I source mm. the product for it. And so we are working also for, uh, with uh, MLIs from, from our perspective. If we understand your problem, we can directly guide you to the solution or develop a solution for you. But it's not about like, oh yeah, I want to push my uh, my product. So yeah, okay, that's that's not the problem of of me as a tool. Of course, my data, your decision, mm. it's your um uh, your doing, and that is really really relevant in the in the understanding of how we are working, for example. Awesome. Well, I love that you guys, every single thing will be, the links will be below this video so you can you. get in touch with Christian and his team and everyone there. And thank you guys so much for your time and for your energy. This has just been a delight to learn and to have this wonderful discussion about, about um, problems and solutions instead of products. Right. Um, so thank you so much for being on the Amazon files. You guys, I know you guys could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thanks so much for listening to the Amazon files podcast. See you same time, same place next week on the Amazon files.